Journaling is a powerful tool for healing and self-reflection. And in today's episode, we're continuing our conversation about the root chakra and how to increase your sense of safety after experiencing sexual abuse. Stay tuned for some hands-on real-time healing work. Hi, my beautiful friends. Welcome to the Danielle Shea podcast. My name is Danielle Shea and I'm your host and I'm a healing coach for sexual assault survivors and a lived experienced expert. That means that I'm a survivor too and my mission is to ensure that all survivors know healing is possible. This platform along with my coaching programs are all designed to turn survivors into thrivers. I want you to live a joyful and fulfilled life. And if you're ready for some healing, let's dive into today's episode. Before we get started in our conversation regarding journaling for the root chakra, I want to just go over what the root chakra is and why it's important for understanding it in order to help you heal from trauma. Chakras are our energy centers, and there are seven major chakras going down the spine, which can give us a key in indicating what we need to heal in order to live a joyful and fulfilled life after experiencing sexual abuse. The root chakra is the foundation of that energy system. It's located at the base of the spine, and it governs our sense of safety, security, and stability. Safety is the foundation to healing from trauma, and it's also the foundation for a joyful human experience. After experiencing sexual abuse, Survivors often feel that their sense of safety is completely lost, along with their sense of self, which is why in the past two episodes, we've been discussing the root chakra. Make sure you check out episode 16 to make sure you understand more about this topic. It's all about overcoming sexual trauma and why healing your root chakra is key. In episode 17, I invited you to do a meditation surrounding the root chakra to support healing in that energy center. Focusing on energy is so crucial in order to heal because we aren't just physical beings. We're energetic beings as well. Additionally, these chakras are also an indicator in what we need to heal. The root chakra symbolizes our sense of safety, security, and stability, as well as helps us produce that. So when we focus on an energy center, We're also focusing on what it represents and helping ourselves heal in that direction. So in today's episode, we are going to do some hands-on real-time healing work. I'm going to invite you to do some journaling prompts with me today. I'll ask you questions and give you time in order to fill out your responses right here, right now. Journaling can be a powerful tool for healing and self-reflection And it also allows you to develop even more self-awareness, which is crucial for healing. These journaling prompts are designed to help you heal your root chakra and overcome sexual trauma. Before we get started, remember to create a safe and supportive environment for yourself so journaling can be free and flowing. I also invite you to complete every single prompt. However, you're in the driver's seat. You are your best healing coach. I'm simply your humble healing guide, so feel free to modify or skip any prompts that may feel triggering or uncomfortable in this moment. If you're ready, grab your favorite journaling modality, make yourself a delicious beverage, and let's get started. Question number one, ask yourself, how has my sexual trauma affected my sense of safety and security in the world? Explore your feelings and thoughts regarding trust, boundaries, and your ability to feel grounded. Take some time to write this down.
Question two, describe any physical sensations or emotions that you associate with your root chakra. How do these sensations manifest in your body? Are there any patterns or triggers you notice? Write these down. You're doing amazing. Let's move on to question three. Reflect on your relationship with your body. How has sexual trauma impacted your body image, self-esteem, or the ability to connect with your physicality? How would you like to improve this relationship? We're exploring this question because we need to understand where's your sense of safety within yourself and within your physical body. Take a few moments to think about this. Thank you. 
Question four, explore your beliefs about sexuality and intimacy. How have they been influenced by your past experiences? Are there any negative thought patterns that you would like to challenge or release? The reason that we're asking this question is because of the nature of this trauma. Since this trauma crosses such a boundary in intimacy, it's important to understand how we feel in relationship to others in this way. So you can define what those boundaries and sense of safety are going to mean for yourself now and in the future. Question five, what are your current coping mechanisms for dealing with the effects of sexual trauma? Are they serving you well or do they hinder your healing? How can you develop healthier coping strategies? When I was going through my own healing journey after experiencing sexual abuse, I put myself in horribly unsafe situations because I didn't care what happened to my body anymore. I didn't care what happened to me. And because of that mentality, I wasn't always safe. Therefore, I was feeling constantly triggered. And I was trying to find a sense of power and find a sense of safety by doing very unsafe things. And that kept me in the cycle of trauma for way too long. So that's why I want you to look at your coping mechanisms right now. Because I understand what it means to put yourself in unsafe situations after experiencing trauma. And this is a common side effect of this trauma from what many of my clients experience as well. Thank you. 
Question six. Consider the support system in your life. Who can you trust and who can you confide in? Are there any individuals or communities that could provide understanding and healing? Identify who you have in your life now and identify who you may need or want in your life in order to have an upward trajectory of healing. Question seven, identify activities or practices that help you feel grounded, safe, and connected to your body. What are these activities that help you feel this way, whether you're doing them now or they're activities that have helped you feel this way in the past? How can you incorporate more of these activities into your daily life? Use this time not only to explore what these activities may look like and how they make you feel, and to also create an action plan for how you can incorporate them now. Thank you. 
And finally, the last journaling prompt. I invite you to write a letter to yourself. A letter to yourself right now from an older, more healed, grounded, and safe version of yourself. Take a few moments to take a few deep breaths and imagine yourself as this grounded, healed version. I want you to take a few moments to write this letter saying all of the things that you did to heal, things you gave up, things you started doing, people you let go of, people you embraced, things about yourself that you let go of, and things about yourself that you embraced. Allow yourself to feel wrapped in a bubble of warmth and safety as you write this letter. Try to put yourself in the mindset of someone who feels safe, someone who feels grounded within their body. The reason that I'm asking you to do this is because your body knows what it needs. Your body knows the answer. And the reason that we do these journaling prompts is to allow you to hear what your body is saying. Your body is intelligent and it is always communicating with you, telling you what it needs and how it needs it. Sometimes you just need to give yourself space in order to listen to what it's saying. So write down exactly what comes to mind first and just let your hand flow across the page. Remember, there's no right or wrong answers. You can always come back to this prompt and change the way you think. What we want to do is get you listening to your body. And this prompt is going to allow you to do that. Congratulations, my friend. You just completed a whole heck of a lot of healing. You allowed yourself time to listen to this podcast. You allowed yourself time to consider these questions and write them down. And you allowed yourself time to heal. That right there is healing. That right there is progress. Every time you show up for yourself and you show up for your healing journey, you are making progress to a more joyful and fulfilled life. And that's exactly what I want for you. Thank you for choosing yourself today. Thank you for choosing your healing. And remember that it's okay to ask for help. Seek out professional support when you need it from a therapist, a counselor, or a healing coach like myself. 
There are people out there who want to support you, who know exactly what you're going through and know how to help you. You are deserving and worthy of healing. You are deserving and worthy of support. And you've proven that to yourself today simply by showing up and listening to this episode. So keep doing that. You're doing amazing. I'm so incredibly proud of you, and I'm sure you're proud of yourself. I'll talk to you next time. Wow, that was incredible. Did you get as much out of listening to that as I did in creating it? I hope you did. I hope you found it helpful and powerful, and I hope that it allowed you to take action and choose yourself today. If you found this to be helpful, please share this with someone who needs to hear this message as well because we don't need to heal alone. Thank you so much for choosing yourself today and for listening. I'll see you next time.